As you can see in some of these later lessons, we're beginning to combine technical elements. So in lesson 16, we're going to start working with some of those more awkward body positions while we're also using our feet in and out. In, in lesson 16.1, we're going to hit an independence issue as well. In addition, we are using the mirror motion. So as you can see, there are several elements now included in some of these exercises. With 16.1, we're back to double verticals. You are going to be utilizing the upper manual with all four mallets, so your body motion will be that rocking motion into the upper manual and then back out. Your peripheral vision will move just a little bit. It's the interval of a third. So those outer mallets will go away from each other and then come back in. You'll also notice in the first two measures, the right hand is playing a specific rhythm. And in measures three and four, your left hand takes over that rhythm. So be careful and watch the rhythm as you play this exercise. In 16.2, we're going to play basically the same rhythm, but now we are going to be splitting the manuals with the mallets. Remember, when both hands need to angle out, you are going to step into the instrument. When both hands need to angle in, you are going to step away from the instrument. Make sure as you play this that you keep your shoulders down. It's really easy, especially when you have to angle in to raise your shoulders. So try and keep those really relaxed throughout this exercise. These exercises are only four bars long, but I would encourage you to repeat them many times till you get the hang of it. Don't just play it once and think you understand that motion of angling and moving in and out. I would recommend that you play them about four times each time you come to practice this exercise. In exercise 16.3, you're going to have to move a little quicker between the outward angle of both hands and the inward angle of both hands. The rhythm is different from the previous two exercises for a reason. You are going to need to prep the angles in advance of playing them. When you have played out here, don't stay there once you're done playing. Make sure you play this note and you prepare the next note in the quarter note time that you have. There's plenty of time, take it slow so you understand this motion, but the idea of preparation is really key to this exercise. Let me address that concept of preparation a little bit more. In measure three, you'll start flat to the instrument playing the C and the E. As soon as you play the C and the E, you need to move right away to the B flat D in your left hand and the D F sharp in your right hand. That's going to look like this. So I'm over those notes before I play them. Now, going from that chord to the next chord is a similar process, but it's a different motion. I'm already out here, and then I need to go all the way in here. So as soon as I hit these notes, I need to move quickly so that I am prepared, and I am in this position well in advance of when I'm going to play it. That looks like this. And this time, I'll actually play the note. So you might need to practice this exercise chord to chord slowly, just so you understand these motions. Play one chord moving to the next one and stop. Make sure that feels comfortable and do that body motion again. 
then proceed that way from cord to cord throughout the rest of the exercise. These motions feel awkward. They are awkward. However, it's your job to practice them so they don't look that awkward. Throughout the literature, you are going to see awkward positions like that. Often a piece won't have awkward positions all the time, but every once in a while, one will get thrown in there and you need to make it look just like the rest of your piece.